coming up on show 628, light year one impresses with aerodynamics, VW promised to improve the ID3, and Tesla Gigafactory 3 targets increase. Those stories and many more coming up on the edition. For what happened on Friday 1st of November, my name is Martin Lee, going through every EV story that I can find every day, and whittling down the abundance of news to save you time, because I know that you are so busy, to hopefully bring you a little condensed what you need to know podcast about electric vehicles thank you as always oh by the way by the way i'm sorry this podcast is coming late and some advance warning there may be a period in december when i have to be away for two weeks from the podcast Um, and i can't say why at the moment and i will share with you as soon as i possibly can it's top secret at the moment but it's looking like sometime in december i'll be taking a short break from uh, from podage but when I can tell you more, I promise I will, as I always do tell you, uh, everything on this show. This is like a, like a family. I love chatting to you on, on socials and the emails you, you send me as well. So uh, I, when I can tell you more, I will. Thank you as always to MyEV.com. You help me make this show. And, and you know, MyEV is the world's first ever marketplace. And it's like all great ideas. You, why didn't I think of that? And it's only about buying and selling electric vehicles. And if you're in the USA, you've got access to this incredible resource. MyEV.com should be definitely in your favourites list. Right, let's kick off with this. The solar-powered Lightyear 1 is claiming to break new ground in aerodynamics. The Dutch startup Lightyear also tried to make the car as aerodynamic as possible when they designed it, increasing efficiency. Lightyear 1 claims they've made the most aerodynamic five-car, uh, five-seat car to date. According to Digital Trends, Lightyear 1 is achieving a drag coefficient of 0.20. Now, let's put that in perspective because it's just a number, right? It uh, The Tesla Model S, 0.23. The Prius, 0.24. Those are two of the most aerodynamic conventional cars you could ever buy. Getting a lower uh, CD, a drag coefficient, with four doors and five seats... It's an amazing achievement. Now, there was a car that was more slippery. It was the Volkswagen XL1, but it wasn't that much more aerodynamic, to be honest with you. And it was impractical. It was tiny. It was a two-seater. The seats were in tandem, weren't they? Or at least the, 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 it was had a narrow body. Anyway, VW ditched uh, practicality in the name of efficiency with that. And it was... It was just a proof of concept, really. Uh, the Lightyear One is driven by four electric motors. They're hub motors, one for each wheel. Lightyear doesn't quote horsepower, not to 62 in 10 seconds. This car isn't about performance. It's about efficiency. And if you live somewhere sunny, so not this country, but if you were in California or somewhere where the sun shines all day long, you could add a few miles to your car every single day because it's covered in solar panels. Right, let's talk Volkswagen. VW's R&D boss is talking about how to improve the ID3. Volkswagen's only recently revealed production version of their full electric car, the ID3, uh, is almost with us. It's production starting on Monday, by the way, this coming Monday, 4th of November, but customers won't get theirs until summertime next year. VW's R&D boss is Frank Welsh and already thinking about how to improve the car. According to Rachel Burgess for Autocar, people need range, says Frank Welsh. Despite the top-end ID3 offering 341 miles of range, he believes people want even more. Well, he would be right. We, we are range greedy. Right? Yeah, right. Uh, so I've got a quote from him, and I'll read this out. It's it's quite lengthy, but, but I'll read you the whole quote so you can see what is going on in the mind of uh, the VW R&D boss of, uh, of the ID3 in terms of R&D. Uh, we won't do this by giving people a bigger battery because it's more weight and more costs. It's about battery density and proving it's not enough to change the drivetrain to electric. We have more room and it drives like a GTI now. We need other USPs that you don't get in other cars. This first step is a good step, but we're going to make speech recognition more intelligent. We can also make much more use of augmented reality, the head-up display in the ID3. We are the first ones to have this. Even in higher segment cars, we can improve it by software upgrades because the hardware is already in the car. Now, 
We have a few situations where you can use it. Navigation mode, lane keeping, showing snowflakes on the street if the temperature is below 4 degrees. We have to assess the situation uh, which is useful to use this kind of technology. Uh, we don't want to do video games, he says. Very, very interesting. We can't wait to see what they're going to do with their over-the-air updates in the ID3. Okay, moving on, let's talk Volvo and their spin-off Polestar brand. And Polestar 1 won't be the Halo model of the brand, at least not forever. It will be for now. Polestar opened a sprawling production facility in uh, Chengdu in China, a couple of months ago in August for their 619 horsepower plug-in hybrid car. It's their Holo car for now. It's called the Polestar 1 and it's going to make they're going to make 500 of them a year, limit the production run for 3 years. 1500 of them will only ever be made in the new production facility between now and 2023, but that impressive plant won't sit dormant for long. According to Motor 1, while production of the electric Polestar 2, that's the mainstream sedan, uh, Tesla Model 3 equivalent, if you like. Uh, the production is kicking off in their China facility in early 2020. Polestar CEO Thomas Ingeleth promises another range-topping vehicle in the future more than the Polestar 1. It's more than likely to come from the company's new Chengdu plant, as all future Polestars will, and this one will be future electric, because they've already said that all future Polestars will be electric, not hybrids. Okay, let's move on. All right, let's talk about... This is, this is super interesting. If you get your Amazon deliveries by a dirty diesel, stinky old van, well, it could well be coming via electric because more vans are being converted to pure EV. Citroen has a brand called LCV. LCV make vans, and LCV, the spin-off of Citroen, plans to extend and expand their electric offering for business customers, 100% electric vans. Uh, concept, uh, compact vans, right, by the way, on the market by 2021. The range will be suited to professionals, uh, offering an outstanding level of comfort, they say, controlled cost of use, the freedom to drive in town centres because it's pure electric, uh, those town centres in this country at least that are banning anything but pure electric cars, bring on the emissions bans, uh, the ability to make last mile deliveries. Within two years, the LCV brand will offer Group PSA's best know-how in terms of 100% vans, and as we told you about recently, uh, the Group PSA and FCA, the Fiat Chrysler, want to join forces. We'll talk about that in a second, bear with me. Uh, they are planning a 100% electric Citroën LCV Jumpy next year, and the new Bolingo van in 2021. They are light commercial vehicles, and also they can be converted to being uh, passenger vehicles as well. And, you know, you break into that taxi market, and all of a sudden... Very, very useful electric tech. All right, let's talk Tesla. Next, Tesla is increasing the range and the price of the Model 3 long range. On top of the software update for the now sadly, I think sadly, discontinued Model 3 long range rear wheel drive, which if I could buy it, that's the one I would have bought in this country, uh, Tesla has now updated the online configurator to list the Model 3 long range, of course, all-wheel drive. The long range all-wheel drive now has a range of 322 miles. According to Fred at Electrek, the automaker has increased the price as well, 47,990 going up to 48,490. Another $500 there on top of the long range all wheel drive. Tesla increased the range of the Model S and the Model X as well with the Raven powertrain. And we've got software updates galore coming soon. More range, more power coming to Tesla owners, I mean, existing owners. Over the air updates, just amazing. Let's talk about a car that I don't believe has over the air updates, but the new owners of that car are, are more than welcome to correct me because more and more people I know are getting one, the MG, the MG ZS EV. WLTP range of 263 Ks, that's 160 miles, and there's a review in Kling Technica today. Well, the price starts at £22,000 with the plug-in grant incentive. It weighs 1,500 kilos, and the affordable SUV can very comfortably sit five people. Acceleration is good without being stellar. 8.5 seconds 0 to 60. Look, 
I mean, that's as quick as most people need quick, right? The top speed is 87 miles an hour, which would still get you a very hefty fine in many places. On the slow side for some cars, but, uh, you know, if I do any more than 70, I'm going to get a ticket. So why would you make a car that can do over 100 miles an hour? 87, which is 140 kilometers an hour, will get you out of trouble, but it won't get you into trouble if that makes sense. According to Clean Technica, the factory where the MGs at SCV is made is capable of making several hundred thousand EVs every single year. They've built a huge facility. And so, if you want that model, you shouldn't have to wait, unlike competing EVs. Another feature is the large trunk and a compartment underneath for the charging equipment. The back seat has ample room, according to the review. I'll put a link to Clean Technica in the show notes. Final story today, then, and Tesla's Gigafactory 3 is waiting for its final permits before Model 3 production could begin in Phase 1. As the wait for the site's certification continues, Tesla's global VP, who is Grace Tao. Now, Grace has shared an incredibly optimistic target for the production activities of Gigafactory 3. It's a good chance Giga 3 could end up serving as the EV maker's dark horse of the quarter that we're in, Q4 2019. According to Simon Alvarez at Tesla Rati, uh, she stated that Gigafactory 3 is aiming to start production activities, not with 100 vehicles a week, not with two or 300 to test the machinery. They want to start off the bat with 3,000 Model 3s per week. That's 12,000 vehicles a month. Yeah, right? huge for a new factory as long as the company doesn't encounter hiccups in the operations very ambitious as previous wall street's estimates said that they would be making 1100 model threes a week in 2021 yes in more than a year's time wall street predicts they'll be making a third of what tesla say they'll be making before the end of the year it's deeply impressive. Let's get on to question of the week this week, which I'll read out on Sunday's show, even though I'm recording Sunday's show a little, a little bit late. But I've explained at the beginning of the show what that's all about. Uh, Martin Young has set this question. Thanks to myev.com for question of the week. What were some of your biggest surprises about living with an EV? If you do indeed own one, and we'll pass it on to EV curious listeners to the podcast. What are your biggest surprises? Email me hello at evnewsdaily.com. You can leave a comment on Facebook and the YouTubings. Thank you to 255 patrons of the podcast. Brand new month and a billing cycle beginning. So if you were billed on Patreon and you're like, oh man, I meant to, that was meant to end, at least if you do it now. It's the last month you'll be charged. Of course, I deeply and sincerely hope that you enjoy this podcast and the value that you get from it. And my current patrons continue. But just a reminder, by the way, I know what it's like. I'm busy. I forget to cancel stuff. Uh, So if you uh, got billed, a reminder, that's what it's all about. Beginning of the month. uh, That's when they do their billing cycle on a calendar month. If you want to know what the fuss is all about and you would like to be part of the gang, Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash EV News Daily. And it's all about funding various projects. Let's talk about the archive. There are 627 shows in there. Woof! It's getting bigger. The new shows are available to anybody for free if you hit subscribe in your podcast app. Come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. Catch you soon. Remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.